PvP in Escape from Tarkov is extremely hectic and complex, but it feels so good when things are going well, and it's so frustrating when you keep dying over and over and over again. And the best players in the world are able to use a ton of little skills all together to give themselves the advantage. This is another one of our Teaching Tactics videos. With the new wipe, we're going to be bringing back Teaching Tactics and Beyond the Grave, which are video series where I take a look at my own gameplay clips from my stream, and we break down the principles and we pull out things that we can learn to get better at Escape from Tarkov. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the way this works is we'll go ahead and we'll watch the clip back in its entirety and then we'll go back and kind of snap by snap and pull out the principles and figure out what we can learn. Now, as a preface, this clip isn't anything crazy. It's not a 1v5. I'm not wiping squads or the whole lobby or hitting thousand meter snipes. But the point is that if you want to get better at PvP and Escape from Tarkov, it doesn't start with just running into a five man, just like the, the Chad Sue or the people that you watch their streams or YouTube videos. It's about learning the principles that allow them to multitask and do that and make that look easy. So when you start to apply these principles, you'll notice that in your 1v1s or in your 1v2, if you're fighting like a duo, then these fights will start to feel easier and you'll start to feel more confident taking on harder and harder fights because of these principles. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and watch the clip and then take it from there. Yeah, it's like, do we run up on this hill and try and snipe the guy that spawns where we spawned two rays ago? Left, 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 left. Two, multiple. Got one. There's definitely multiple. One was farther, farther, uh, just like up this direction. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna go for it because this will be my last kill. Got it. So like we said, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, a quick two-man kill. Uh, it definitely wasn't a perfect clip as we'll go over. There's some things that I definitely could have done better. But you'd be surprised at how many things were going through my head to make that look like a pretty easy fight. I wasn't really worried. We killed the first guy really quickly. We got the second guy. I pushed it to get a quest done. And it was just kind of a, si a simple, easy fight. And there were a lot, as I was reflecting on it, there were a lot of different things that went into that. So going kind of back to the beginning of the clip, as you can see, right when we started the clip, right from the beginning, the first thing I said was, should we move over here to this hill and kill this guy that spawned where we spawned two raids ago? And that's the first thing here. It's map knowledge and specifically knowing the spawns. Knowing the spawns is tremendously valuable on Escape from Tarkov. It's almost OP because of how static the maps are and how static the spawns are. Whether you want PvP or you're trying to get away from PvP, knowing the spawns is huge because other people are probably going to know the spawns. And if they want PvP, they can push you down here. Us spawning right here, this is the very beginning of this raid. From this position, we're probably going to go to the cottages, which is right here on my right. There's safes, there's loot, there's scavs, potentially sanitar. But the problem is, if somebody spawns up here, they're probably coming this way as well, and they're going to be behind us. So we're going to have to fight them either way, most likely. So since we're right here, it's like, well, let's hop up here and let's check. Let's kind of violence of action. Let's be the aggressor on this. If they're up here, we can catch them off guard. So learning the maps is huge. You can pull up Map Genie, the maps on the wiki, check the spawns. Obviously, even, the, even just the context, you don't have to have thousands of hours of experience. The thing I said was, should we check up here where we just spawned two raids ago? So that's a great way to do it. When you spawn, look around, find your context, play out your raid. And then if you spawn on that map again in a different spot, try and think of where you are in relation to where you spawned before. If you're close like we were here, well then hop up and try and see if you can find that person uh, or move away if you don't want the PVP and just be aware somebody could spawn there. So map knowledge, specifically spawn point knowledge is tremendously valuable in PVP. So after that, we kind of move up to the hill. We start looking at the position where we spawned before. We've got the long range scope, so I'm kind of trying to figure it out. The audio obviously in this wipe is very, very brutal. And uh, as you can see, it took me forever to realize those steps weren't Veritas. You know, Veritas is moving around. It's only when he moves completely directly to my right, I hear him go from behind me to my right and then hear something on my left that I'm able to discern that there's actually somebody else. We probably heard their footsteps a while. But the second kind of skill is awareness and being able to listen in a certain direction and still look in a separate direction. So as you can see in the beginning, when I only heard the one footstep on my right, on my left, sorry, before I even saw that guy, I called that there were two people. And the reason is if we zoom in right here, this is actually a guy that I see. So if we kind of like slow this down, I'm hearing a guy very, very close to me. 
And as I'm scanning around trying to find that guy, I see this guy walking from right to left and then immediately track over to the guy on farther left, the guy that's closer to me. We click the laser on and we take care of him super, super quickly. One of the things I get asked the most about is how did you spot that guy? How did you see that guy? And it's really just a combination of playing the game a lot and looking for contrast, looking for things that aren't supposed to be there or looking for things that are moving. So much of the game is just static. The trees kind of blow in the wind, but it's just trees, houses. So any movement is a bad guy. And this is kind of a foggy day. So the fact that I was able to just kind of see the contrast of the black against the lighter black and see him move from right to left, then I, I start to make out a figure here. I see a helmet and a gun but I know based on the audio that there's a guy really, really close. So obviously this guy is the threat. This guy is danger close. So that second multitasking kind of skill is being able to look and listen at the same time, potentially in different places um, and look for that contrast. You'll start to see enemies. Map knowledge obviously goes into this, knowing where people most likely move out of a spawn and where people like to cross. Um, but sometimes you just catch some movement and you're like, okay, that's a guy and you have to be confident in it. So I call that there's the second guy. And the third tip here, the third like multitasking thing is knowing your equipment. I've got an AUG here, which definitely is a pretty usable 5.56 gun, but the recoil on this is pretty crazy. I've got an LCAN, which is a magnified scope. And I know that if I zoom in, even on the one times of this LCAN, if I zoom in on somebody and try to full auto them, it's, the, it's gonna go everywhere. The recoil is gonna be everywhere and it's gonna be really hard to track. At close distances like this, it's much easier, in my opinion, to point fire your gun uh, because the camera recoil isn't as crazy and you can kind of like keep it centered. Additionally, knowing you have a flashlight, knowing you have a laser, use it. I had previously set up my flashlight, so when I turned it on, I knew it wasn't going to be a flashlight. I knew it was going to be a laser. All of these little things, you know, make sure your gun's on full auto, make sure your laser's where you want it, what kind of optic do you have, all of this comes into when I need it. So I was able to literally just, I'm looking for this guy. I see his buddy. I hear this guy. I don't know where he is. And it's right here. I click on the laser, which helps me know where my point of aim is. Right now it's really low. So I can raise it up. And my, the recoil of the gun, I got, got lucky there. The recoil of the gun kind of walked right up to his face. And I got a really quick headshot on the guy. But knowing the equipment that you have, knowing I could turn the laser on and it wouldn't just broadcast my position with a flashlight, knowing that I don't want to ADS with this thing, so I'm going to rely on the point fire here, applying that with all the other things, listening for the audio, knowing the map knowledge, I was able to swing around and take him. And then the next skill that went into this is always... Uh, being behind cover and always moving. I don't want to kill this guy and then crouch and stay right here because he's going to be calling to his buddy directly in front of me. If you saw where I was, the guy was right in front of me. He was really, really close. So I want to move so that while they're making those comms over Discord, uh, they're not accurate comms. That's one thing that you want to be doing. But also I want cover. I know that the second guy was decently far away. I spotted that guy. He was like 30, 40 meters away. This guy was super close. So I know that I have time because this guy's relaying information to his buddy. His buddy's trying to figure out where he was when he died. So I know that I've got time to make a move and kind of be aggressive here. Secondly, I'm moving cover to cover to cover to cover. As soon as I kill this guy, I go left to a tree. I wrap around it, I go directly in front of me to a tree, and I take a right hand. So I'm not running in a straight line, I'm kind of moving around, I'm keeping cover close to me, I'm taking a right hand peek, and I'm trying to kind of, you know, suss out where this other guy is. I can't really see him, I go up, once again, I wanna be aggressive, I wanna move. I feel like with this gun setup that I have, my two engagement distances that I'm gonna be the most accurate on are like 100 meters away with the LCAN and 5.56 since it flies fast, or close, so I don't have to rely on really, really bad recoil in a mid-range, you know, full auto engagement. So I push, I go aggressive. I also only need one more kill for the quest. That definitely plays a part into it. And ultimately what happens here is he shoots at me and I see his muzzle flash. As I'm, once again, kind of strafing around cover, I'm not really, really close to cover, but I'm keeping cover between me and where I think he is. As I move between that tree, I see the muzzle flash, immediately keep this tree as my cover, as you can see, I'm lining up this tree straight in front of me, and then I make a right hand. Same thing with this guy. This fight definitely wasn't pretty, this second guy, but I know that I don't want to ADS on this guy. The branches, I'm not going to be able to see him, and as soon as I ADS with the L can and start shooting, I'm going to be super high. Uh, so we use the laser, we kind of try and track him, and we get some decent shots and we kill him. 
immediately break away just in case there's a third, immediately move back to my buddy and immediately move back to cover. Luckily, it was just those two and we were able to clean up this fight. Now, like we said, not a perfect clip. My comms weren't great. When I called close left, close left, that was good. But when I saw the other guy, I had killed this guy. I was thinking about what I needed for my quest. I was thinking about cover. I was reloading. And my comms, I was like, uh, he's, uh, there's a second guy. Uh, he's up here. I definitely could have worked on my comms for a little bit. And I definitely could have kept tighter cover as I was pushing the second guy. I did definitely get kind of lucky that he didn't hit a headshot or a thorax shot on me either of these times. He hits me here in the arm and uh, he could have headshot me right there. I could have kept a little bit closer to cover, but that's kind of it. Th those are all these things. Like we said, I really, really, truly believe that the best players in the world, yes, have insane aim and they have insane game sense. But what is game sense? It's the ability to multitask and do all of these little skills at once. And they can be applied in a 1v1 or in a 1v2 situation like this, not just these huge, insane, epic battles where people are wiping lobbies. So I hope that these things kind of laid out a path of things uh, for you to work on and kind of showed you how they all work in concert together to keep your advantage high, no matter what you're doing, no matter what map you are, and no matter what gun that you have. So I hope that this helped. We definitely want to do more of these. And like we said, we're going to be bringing back the Beyond the Grave, which is when I do this to clips where I actually die and we try and figure out what happened and what I could do better. So stick around. If you like this video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov six days a week. That's where all these clips get recorded. I would love to have you stop by and say, hey, that link is down below as well. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.